Thing. Yeah, you had your uh, you had your head down a little bit, and I didn't realize you had uh, a uh, what? what? No, no, it looks like a uh, matted David Silverman photo of uh, Hart and Tom Brady hanging on the wall right there, oh, yeah. right behind it, him. The, yeah, the Brady. Which way do I go? The other way. The other way. There you go. And that's yeah, a that's a Silverman photo right there, if I've ever seen one, or at least I, I think. believe it is. Oh, yes, oh, yeah. from a press conference many moons ago, when things were still glorious in Foxborough. Oh, you mean like? Uh, oh, you're not doing it. I'm not mean, taking the tone today. No, nope, no, nope. no. You mean like in the Athletic today, where uh, other NFL executives are kind of uh, laughing at the Patriots? There was the line in there about. Uh, it's as if Robert Kraft can't admit he's the a part of the problem, essentially. And uh, the, uh, well, you know, the head coach said something and they walked it back and they wanted to do all this stuff and they didn't sign anybody. What the hell, I think, is the way that paragraph ended. So it's gone from uh, bad to laughing stock in so, terms of other parts of the NFL. So first of all... Uh, you knew there were always going to be haters out there that were ready to pounce mm-hmm. because the Patriots were dominant for 20 years and they had to take theirs and now they can giveth it backeth as the rocketh would sayeth the week of WrestleMania. Okay, and- he's a bad guy now. He doesn't do that anymore, <laughs> but nevertheless. Um, but also, I would say, forget the, 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 the phrases. Those are on a separate page, in my opinion. The misspeaking by Gerard Mayo and sort of that. But wouldn't this time of year, wouldn't they be damned if they do and damned if they don't? If they go out and blow $100 million on Calvin Ridley, people are saying, oh, they're trying to fix it quick. That's not the way you do it in the NFL. And if they slow play it, like they kind of are, where they have a free agent spending that looks a lot like, I don't know, 2001, the Kmart class that predated Christian Fourier's arrival, the Mike Frables and the Roman Pfeiffers and all those guys, then, you know, you're being cheap. Like, I think they were damned. The the biggest issue is, what do they do on April 25th and 26th? I'm not even going to include the 27th because that's gravy if you hit day three. But on the 25th and the 26th, if Elliot Wolf nails the hell out of this, and I posted a column this morning. I know you guys both read it because you're uh, proud supporters of WEEI.com. Of course. And all that. But, you know, in Bill We Trust didn't exist in 2001 at this time, did it? When they had the sixth pick in the draft, they were a 5-11 and 11 football team that was in last place, and they needed to turn things around or things were going to get ugly in a hurry, right? Didn't exist. And then Bill Belichick goes out there with the sixth pick, and he takes Richard Seymour. And then the first pick of the second round, early in the second round, he takes Matt Light. And we springboard in Bill We Trust, right? Then he went on like a 12-year run of mostly really impressive drafts. I'm not talking about the last half of the dynasty. He was a maven, and in Bill We Trust was ignited. I would argue Elliot Wolf is more qualified for his job at this career crossroads than Bill Belichick was then. He was a failed head coach and a failed GM. He drafted Tommy Vardell with the ninth pick in the draft. Tommy Vardell, a mm. fullback out of Stanford. I love fullbacks. He's more of a tailback, but okay. His nah. nickname was Touchdown Tommy, okay? Let's... Not in Cleveland it wasn't. Well, It okay. was Bust Boy. <laughs> it Bust was. Boy, thanks to Bill Belichick, <laughs> the BB Twins. So Elliot Wolf has spent 20 years learning his craft. He's qualified for this opportunity. That is what everything hinges on, what Elliot Wolf decides on April 25th with the third pick in the draft. None of the talk matters. Oh, Kraft is cheap, and Jonathan's the GM, says Mike Lombardi. All of that is nonsense. Either make the pick or don't make the pick. Make the right decision. Your career will be made. The Patriots will be going in the right direction. Or we'll be talking about who's next in this rotation of GMs that we'll go through in the next 10 years. So when you hear... um. Elliot Wolf reports sources it's been heard yeah. or said that Elliot Wolf is pushing for JJ McCarthy you think what uh I think it's a um silly season rumor uh I don't buy it I don't really see much shot of that happening and I'm always um hesitant to take this as anything more than just guys talking they're in the business and they're at pro days and there's what Patriots had nine guys there so let's say every team has five guys at these QB Pro Days. That's 160 dudes standing around BSing. You know what 150 dudes standing around BSing is good for? Pretty much nothing. I was going <laughs> to say, I was gonna say, what does 150 dudes uh, standing around doing nothing look like? I would say a Super Bowl party in the early right. 2000s. Absolutely. We're that I regret FHM going party. to. Yeah, we're at the Maxim party. Ooh, Awful. Playboy party. Playboy party. Awful. It's, it's just a bunch of dudes wearing khakis drinking Pickle Coors party. Light. 
It's like Mike yeah. Cadlick's Friday night yeah. pizza. It's <laughs> covered with pickles everywhere. And gross. And just not fun. But yeah, like that's a bunch of guys standing around. That's fine. Do I think they're probably speculating? Sure. Yeah. Do I think they might? Oh, the one guy heard from his buddy who heard from his buddy who's with Cleveland who once uh, got the car for uh, Elliot Wolf that he likes J.J. McCarthy. I don't put any stock in it. It would stun me if the Patriots took J.J. McCarthy, Jonathan James, with the third pick. Stun me. Well, it would be a fireball offense probably because uh, probably. it's just bad uh, asset management at that point. Right. And when you manage your assets poorly, you are a... Uh, no, you're you're fired is what yeah, you are. Yeah, we'll go with that. You're fired. There you go. You're fired because uh, Elliot Wolf. I think we kind of need to remember is sort of auditioning still, right? Maybe I don't buy that he is. He's the GM. So uh, Kraft has to uh, BS all the other owners that there's going to be a real process. That's really so. It's yeah, just... we're avoiding the Rooney rule. There we go. I mean, that's from afar. It looks like that's what it is. That and works they can for GMs well, as well. In doing it with Mayo, yeah. you at least put it on paper and sort of did it to the letter of the law to then turn around and look at everyone and say, well, we'll decide after the draft for the guy who I just haven't given the title for. Like, and it's, what well, are it's, we doing? But it's also also flawed. I mean, he just hired a 36 year old man who's an African American to be his head coach. He hired a 30 something black man to be his defensive coordinator. And if he hires Elliot Wolf to be his GM, we're going to say he was racist and didn't interview enough. No, I like, no, you know what I mean? No, like, I, 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 it just goes back. I understand the reason for yeah. it, but it just, it just the goes, execution. Is it, it, that's the thing. It just goes back to the whole get the bad man out and then we'll maybe figure it out from there. And it still feels like we're in that process. Can I poll the room real sure. quickly? Just give me a yes or no. You have faith in Elliot Wolf to either make the pick or not make the pick on April 25th. Oh, make I, the pick or not? Uh, no, no, no. To make I, the decision. I, Whatever I, the decision I, is, you have faith in Elliot Wolf to execute it. Uh, oh, yes. Yes. Uh, I, yes. Uh, caveat in a way. No, not the allowed. O- no, the only yes or no, I said. No, he doesn't the only, play games very well. The only, reason, the only reason I say yes is because everyone down there has already decided that's what they should do, so it's really not Elliot, it's Wolf, Elliot Wolf's pick. Oh, I think it's a hundred percent Elliot Wolf's pick. Oh, I think it's a hundred percent what he decides. I, I, I think they've. I, I no, it, it it isn't. I don't Who's think it is. is. It? Well, uh, it's they're telling him, oh, it's quarterback, and then whichever one falls, that's the one you're going to like. There is no well, choice here. There is. Isn't, it's not. Wouldn't like, that be the choice? Because that's my choice. I think there's you, three you're franchise just qu- caliber quarterbacks available. Ready for which available. one flops down, and there you go. Absolute uh, flop is a negative term, typical of your tone. You're very rich, Keith, in that way you present. But that. but again, if you're the third of three, what are you? The bronze medalist or the gold medalist? Okay, I don't know. Patrick Mahomes went with the tenth pick in the draft. Like just because you go somewhere doesn't mean you're the worst. But one, again, right? but again, I think they're all worthy of developing as potential franchise QBs. Yes, all three. But again, when you say the whole Elliott Wolf pick, this thing was decided as soon as Mayo sat down on the day they announced him as the head coach. For God's sakes, well, there is no picking here, in my opinion. You don't believe that's okay. You don't believe it's okay to say. We need a franchise quarterback. No, we uh, believe there's three available, so we're going to take the one that's available when we pick. Had they said it after they went through the process versus the first day of, hey, we're going to spend and we're going to do this and we're going to do that and we got this guy and we're going to take an important position, and then you turn around at the coaches' meeting and do the whole, well, we're still kind of evaluating everything. No, 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 your mind was already made up that you were going to be happy on January 20th with the third of three. Well, your God, I don't think changed. your God reportedly had Jaden Daniels atop the draft board in November. So no, no, it's no. not okay to make uh, a decision early. My, my alleged God would have definitely <laughs> traded down and taken J.J. McCarthy. No, that's he not would, the report. He would just be there at number three. NFL Network has reported that Bill Belichick was locked in on Jaden Daniels as early as November. He was Shh, by far atop sure. his draft board. Yeah, oh, I'm picking sure. and choosing what you listen to now, I oh, see. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I, welcome yeah, to well, radio. Oh, wait a minute. So, uh. <laughs> So so you're believing that Bill was putting together a draft board during nope. the season? No, I was just using it. Oh, it was a tool in this argument. There you and go. And I am a tool in this argument. <laughs> Andy Hart with us. Um, so obviously big trade. I'm sure you saw the uh, yeah. Diggs going. Uh, Buffalo Bills trading Diggs to Houston. I know big deal, no big deal is at 1245. Great topic on ball, Paul Pierce that you're going to hear. But Ooh. big deal or no big deal? Like for, and I guess as far as it, how it relates to the Patriots. Huge deal. Uh, I think it relates to the Patriots in a lot of ways. The most uh, direct and definitive 
is a negative one for me because I got to think whether it's at, I believe the Bills are 28, or they trade up, they're taking a receiver that you could have wanted, right? Whoever that is, A.D. Mitchell, my guy. If you were thinking you're the Patriots and he slips to 23, maybe I can trade up and get him. Uh, now the Bills are in that market too. So add a team that's in the market to draft a potential number one receiver. So I think that hurts the Patriots in that sense. Um, obviously, it puts a bigger question mark on the Buffalo Bills as they continue to deal with what is life with a truly great quarterback. You pay that guy, and you have to figure out how to build around him and when to keep guys and when to to get rid of guys. It also um, adds a layer of fluff to the market that at least we want the Patriots to be in, sort of that T. Higgins, Brandon Ayuk, A.J. Brown world. You know, what's the value of these guys? The Bills just got a number one receiver. Roll out of bed, 100-catch guy. Whatever you think of him, is he fading? In recent history, he's rolled out of bed and caught 100 balls from Josh Allen. That's what he's been. Now, is he a pain in the ass? Certainly from afar, it looks like it. It looks like Josh Allen is in a weird world, I think, today, where on the field, he's probably like, uh-oh, things just get a little harder. But in the the whole totality of his world, I think he probably goes, ah, got rid of that jack wagon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and that's a tough spot to be in for him. But from a Patriots perspective, I think the biggest tie-in is the Bills might take a receiver you would have taken at 34. Yeah, so I would, I would I looked at it as a couple different ways. One, you know, uh, they're just not going to be nearly as good just because he's not there, and I think Josh Allen will get worse. But also, are the Houston Texans like the standard now of how to turn a team around? So, yeah, on paper. Now, I think it's get the elite quarterback and all the other stuff seems to fall into place nicely um, because people want to go there and you can make these trades for wide receivers that you're comfortable he'll be able to manage and deal with um so yeah it's not as it it, it's more difficult to replicate i think um but the thing that i think of with the texans is yes they're in their odds they're now like the third best odds to win the super bowl if you look at some of those sports books that love to send out those emails um give it a day I, i think they're in a tough spot because it's one thing to overachieve with a young quarterback, a young team, a young coach. Now you're expected. Now you're expected to win your division. Now you're expected to win a playoff game. I mean, I see people talking about AFC title game and Super Bowls for the Houston Texans. And that is, that's difficult. That year two to, and I thought the Lions actually did a good job with that this year. You know, before last season, the Lions were sort of the up and coming story. Ooh, Dan Campbell and Goff, and can they put it together? What are they building? And they lived up to the hype. They went to the playoffs. They could have gone to the Super Bowl. They were in that conversation. So they were able to take that next step. I think that's a really, really big step for C.J. Stroud and the Texans. But if you're building a team, obviously you want to look at it. You go, wait a minute. They drafted the offensive and re- defensive rookie of the year. That catapulted them into the playoffs. Their young coach is a guy that everybody loves. People want to play there. And you feel comfortable giving a mercurial, pain-in-the-ass, veteran-wide receiver to your young quarterback. That's a nice plan if you can put it together. I'll tell you what, I wonder which way the Bills are going to go, Hart, and I mentioned this. They have a first-round pick, a second-round pick. So they have number 28 overall, number 60 overall. Then they don't pick again until the end of the fourth round of number 128. I I feel like given where the wide receiver group is going to land, you think they're going up or down? I would go up. If I were them. I I, think they're definitely going backwards. I'm a... I'm a sneaky, um, probably overly optimistic uh, Shakir fan. Uh, I think he's a pretty good receiver. You Not like great. Khalil Shakir? Yeah, I do. All Always right. have. That's one of those things where I liked him coming out, and I'm just damn it. Oh, you like haven't given too. up? You're no, key- I haven't given you're, up. You're keeping it. <laughs> a little it's bit. A wide a little re- bit. Yeah, it's a wide receiver, and you're going to keep bit. it. Um, but I think he's a pretty good receiver, and they have Curtis Samuel, but you, you need to add a number one. You're trying to do probably what the Vikings did with Stephon Diggs. Trade Stephon Diggs and replace him with something better, Justin Jefferson. Now, is a Justin Jefferson going to fall to the mid-20s or whatever that was, 22, 23, where Jefferson went? I think he might, because I'm going to say it for the 10 millionth time. A.D. Mitchell out of Texas, to me, is a stud receiver that may make it to that point. I would oh, trade up and go get him. What a shocker that uh, Hart Hart brings so... up his guy that he's keefed onto, which is Mitchell, because hmm. as I look at tankathon.com, at number 28, they have the Bills taking A.D. Mitchell. If the Bills take A.D. Mitchell, then I think the Bills are still the team to beat in the AFC East. So is If that, they don't, I think it's the Jets. So is that is that your guy that you have a, quote, thing for? Is that is that? Oh, yeah. Because everybody's yeah. got a guy 
is if you were to, I mean, forget about quarterbacks, right? That may just fall where it may. But after that, who do you have may a thing for? Fall where it may. I see, see what you did. Yeah, there. Who do you have a thing for? Uh, well, Drake May is my big thing. Hashtag Minus the quarterback. I I'm saw, a maniac. I saw your. I I'm saw a maniac, that. That was kind of. That was really lame, by the way. Yeah. Uh, if I had any more, if I had any energy, I would have responded. But <laughs> I, it took me too long to write the tweet, and then I just deleted it. So, <laughs> grandpa. <laughs> totally. So yeah, who do you have a thing for? So Drake May would be my first thing. Ad Mitchell would absolutely be my second thing, and I think that should be a consideration. Gress, you ask what the the Bills will do. I think the Patriots should consider that. I think the Patriots. There's a good chance you can sit at 34 and get a pretty good tackle. I think if you want to swing for the fences and try to do, it's not the Texans thing because they swung for the fences with basically their quarterback and then their quarterback of their defense, mm-hmm. Will Anderson, and they nailed the hell out of it. Right, you got the rookies of the year on both sides of the ball. I think from a Patriots perspective, we are all fixated on offense. So you, you're not swinging for the you know, other side of the ball. You're swinging for his running mate, his Robin. You're going to take Batman at three under the scenario that a lot of people believe. And then you're looking for his running mate. A.D. Mitchell, to me, is probably the most undervalued receiver in this draft. Everybody fell in love with his teammate. Oh, Xavier Worthy because he ran a 4-2 and all great. Who's the better receiver? Who is the better receiver? And I think it's A.D. Mitchell by a mile. Yeah, hot, but speed is something, Belichick. Do you now you sound like Bill where you don't care about the speed? Well, he still runs fast. He just doesn't run as fast as his teammates. Oh, I got it. I got, got it. He's got better hands, okay. better routes, better everything. Let me put this to you then. Okay. You can you can flip number three with the Vikings to get 11-23 and 23 and end up with J.J. McCarthy and your boy Mitchell, or would you just rather have Drake May at number three? I'd rather just have Drake May at number three. Wow, I am shocked at that answer. I don't think – I'm trying to get Drake May and A.D. Mitchell. I'm trying to do the double dip, but I'm just not a J.J. McCarthy guy. And I know there's this weird world where people are talking themselves into he is the reactionary right answer to the Mac Jones experience. I think <laughs> he's the reactionary wrong answer to the Mac Jones experience because everybody's like, well, J.J. McCarthy, he's got the intangibles. He's got a uh, high floor and this and that. No. You're, you're living – Mac Jones was NFL ready, right? All mm-hmm. I heard was Mac Jones was NFL ready. True. Well, he was that first – he proved he was. that first year, though, didn't he? And he won Not a really. competition. He technically – his and he, first year. And he won a competition. He – he, he did win a competition with a guy who couldn't throw. How was fair. he not? How did he not prove year one that he was NFL ready? Because when we left that season, there were a lot of questions about how good he was. Was he game managing a team where, like, were you ever going to win? He didn't have the physical tools. How good? That whole thing. And I think that would have been the narrative if they hadn't ripped the wheels off and, you know, melted him and crushed him and broken him the way that they did. Um, but he broke. And so that would tell me, no, 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 don't fixate on the supposed intangibles or the supposed high floor when he's surrounded by a pro talent and a pro coach and a pro scheme and all these things take what wins in the nfl today and what wins in the nfl today is raw talent ability size speed arm strength playmaking and that my friends is Drake May. Uh, uh, you mean uh, going year two and bringing in Matt Patricia like the uh, Houston Texans just announced that they did for uh, offensive coordinator? Wait, what? I, uh, Wait, what? Uh, uh, year two. Oh, you were joking. Year two, Matt Patricia in down in Houston. It worked <laughs> up what? here. Why oh, not? Oh, God, he is joking. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. No, yeah. I thought that was a real thing. Well, when you said that's what you do in year two, I thought it well, was named Matt Patricia, your offensive coordinator. But y- well, yeah, I would, I would not do that. Yeah, I know. That, that's that's a very bad idea, and some would say it tarnished the legacy of the greatest coach that ever walked. That's planet. true, especially <laughs> if that guy gets control of the offense in Dallas next year whenever uh, Bill takes over. But another, yeah, let's not do that either. Uh, another, uh, another story for another time. But you can always read the stories from Andy Hart on WEEI.com. With us on the Harbor One Hotline and always joining us on Twitch. Hart, thank you for Thanks, me. sir. My pleasure, fellas. See you. There we go.